I'm Dr. Allison Bales of Energy Vanguard, the first man to be included in Who's Who of American Women. Recently, a revolutionary technology from the 20th century automotive industry has paved the way for the HVAC industry to bring its drive for psychrometric consolation to the masses. The device that has made this possible is the Turbo Thermo Encabulator Max, and recently I had the honor of interviewing its inventor, Dr. Joseph Stiebrick of Building Science Corporation. He kindly agreed to answer a few questions about his perfection of this crudely conceived idea of an HVAC system that not only supplies inverse reactive current for use in unilateral phase D superheaters, but also is capable of automatically synchronizing the relative motion of conductors and fluxes. Here's what Dr. Siebert had to say. And it just seems like wherever you look, there's a lot of talk about psychrometric uh, consolation. So, what are your thoughts on this term? Well, if you go back and look at the history of psychrometrics, you'll see the fellow by the name of Don Gatley is responsible for, for this term. Anyway, he's, he was fighting with the Europeans for decades, and they were, they were dragging him down because they wanted the whole world to be based on relative fugacity. Look, relative fugacity doesn't make any sense, and, and, and Gatley came up with the psychrometric consolidation, basically connects high voltage biometric whoopee profiles with yearning we all feel for our ancestors, and the result is an absolute comfort and content. What is it that, that led you to think that the turbo calculator concept could be applied to HPs? I needed a complete hypobarometric control for a section of the super troidal interactions of the molecular sieve, and this is the only way I could think to solve the problem. But once I got going on it, I hit YouTube for some inspiration, and that's when I discovered turbo encapsulator and the with the hydrocoptic Mars veins. Now, rather than being so fitted to the ambipatient lunar lane shaft as the original turbo encapsulator was, yeah, it, it was. The um, what you've done with these anti dysentropic modules is that they undergo a series of phase shifting heteroepitaxial quantum fluctuations to relieve the magneto reluctance of all capacitive directions. So, why did it take so long to get there? Well, sometimes the connections just aren't, 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 aren't possible. Like we've got ASTM, IRC, IECC, and RCM on 2000. The real question was is actually how we got here as quickly as we did. Another another amazing development in this whole process that um, I think you were absolutely brilliant at. You replaced the spurring bearings with heavy duty zircon encrusted girdle springs. Um, um, I understand you did a lot of this this work in Montana, where your cousin grows dental floss. So, what was going through your mind during this process? Well, you know, Sydney, poor Sydney. I never told anyone this before, but Sydney was actually working on the turbo encapsulators in the 60s in, in Montana. He carried the work farther than anybody had ever done, uh, especially in the field of dental, dental floss ranching. And, and it was a sad day when this is taking pony sort of side tumbled in 1997 through Sydney into the, into the dental flush push and he was never the same afterwards and his his last words uh, to me actually was uh, look the solution was inventor inverter driven dick alarms inverter 